Well, the biggest difference between our model and reality is that in our model, we've discretized the problem in both space and in time. So remember the E fields and the HY fields are offset in space and also in time. And due to space being discretized and because of central differencing, the electric fields are not located at the same position in space as the magnetic fields, which you can see here. They're offset by half of a grid cell. So in our spatial grid, we can't make the sigma and the sigma star values change from zero, as I'm going to plot on the previous slide, they can't change from zero to some value at a specific point in space. So if this is the air region and here is our absorbing material, they're going to be off by half of a grid cell. And as a result, if we try to implement an abrupt material interface in our model that has both sigma and sigma star changing at the same space, we're going to get numerical reflection at the surface of the absorbing material. But luckily, there is a way for us to get this absorbing material to work in our model. It turns out we can get a reflection of near zero at the surface of the absorbing material if we defined the sigma and sigma star values to be gradually increasing from zero to some maximum value. So in this case, if this is air, we would have some sigma max value and it would slow their sigma here would slowly increase in the absorbing material. A commonly used profile for this gradual increase of sigma and sigma star is a polynomial grading. And we're going to be using this as well. So here, sigma x, this changes with position x, is x over d to the power m times sigma max. So d here is the thickness of the absorbing material. M is the order of the polynomial. And sigma max is the maximum value of sigma that is reached at the far edge of the grid. So that's this here. That's adjacent to the PEC. So we still have sigma is equal to infinity. We still have a PEC here at the very far left edge of the grid. Let's discuss how to set the values in this polynomial grading. First, when choosing a value for D, we have to balance the effectiveness of the absorbing material because a thicker absorbing layer is going to be more effective, but then we also have to balance that with the computational efficiency. For computational efficiency, a thin absorbing material is better because it won't require as much memory or time to store and update all those extra field components from an, a, thick, um, a thick absorbing boundary. Commonly, a thickness of 10 cells is used for an absorbing material. Next, when choosing a value for M, we need to balance making M too small or too large. When M is too small, I'll say too small, then there's a large step discontinuity at the surface of the absorbing material. So here, if I were to plot again air in our absorbing material, if M is too small, then we get a sudden step here and it we still have a grading, so sigma still changes, but there's this large discontinuity right at the surface of the absorbing material and that introduces a reflection. On the other hand, if M is too large, we'll have, in that case, a very nice uh, gradual increase of sigma at the beginning of the absorbing material but then it'll start to increase too quickly after that. 
And so this is going to create large discretization errors deep within the absorbing material, and we're going to get large reflections. To balance these two issues for polynomial scaling, usually a value for m is chosen that is between uh, 3 and 4. And lastly, we need to choose a value for sigma max. If sigma max is too small, then we're going to see, if I were to plot sigma, then it'll increase here, but it won't increase enough, and so we're going to be have a sigma max here that is relatively small. So in this case, we're going to get a reflection that's mostly due to the PEC wall that's at the edge of the grid. So we're not going to get enough absorption in the PML. If sigma max, on the other hand, is too large, then we're going to get big discretization errors. So it's going to change everywhere. It's just going to change to quickly up to sigma max. So here, every time, this the discretization errors are where the E and the H fields are off by half a cell. So we're going to get reflections here at each of these locations where the sigma and sigma star are changing. So to uh, often, the optimal choice for sigma max balances these two sources of error, and people choose often sigma max is 0.8 times m plus 1 over eta naught, characteristic impedance of free space, delta x, which is the grid resolution, and mu r and epsilon r, the relative permittivity and the relative permeability of the material adjacent to the absorbing material. In this equation that we came up with for sigma max, this is the characteristic impedance of free space, so that's mu naught over epsilon naught from table 7-1. And then mu r and epsilon r depend on what material number 1 is, the material outside of the absorbing material. In our case, uh, material number 1 is air, and since epsilon is equal to epsilon r, epsilon naught, and we know epsilon for air is equal to epsilon naught. That means epsilon r in our case is equal to 1. And similarly, ep mu is equal to mu r mu naught. And since we have air, we, can, we have mu is equal to mu naught. And so mu r in our expression is going to be equal to 1. All right, so now we have figured out the details of the absorbing material what thickness is best, how the conductivity needs to increase with depth into the absorbing material, and to what maximum value the conductivity needs to increase to. Now we just need to figure out how we can implement this absorbing material in our one-dimensional computer model. What do you think? How can we implement this material in our grid?